We love you. Know in your heart that you are loved. We bless you. And you are a blessing to this world. We appreciate you. You are an individualized expression of God. We behold the Christ as you. The kingdom of heaven is all around you and within you. We We look look forward to to the the time time when we will be together together again. again. Good morning, friends. It's Rev. Pat Bessie, and I am delighted to be here with you this morning. Welcome to Unity Center for Spiritual Growth and for our Sunday celebration service. And I am very excited because we have a wonderful guest with us this morning. And I'm already seeing many of you putting your um, morning greetings in the chat box. I'm seeing Ahmed, Bill Taylor, Don Labby, Linda, Lisa McDonald. And let me see, Dania. Oh, so many of you are already speaking to me this morning. I love it. And if you are with us today for the very first time, if this is your first time joining us, I would love it if you would put your uh, name in the chat box and let us know where you're coming from so that we can greet you. Um, This is the way we have to do it these days. Um, But we would really love to know who you are and where you're from. And can you believe it? Can you believe that this is the one year anniversary of this experience that we have been through? That this is the one year anniversary where we had to stop meeting in person? It's hard to believe uh, that it has been that long and yet it feels like it's been forever. So we do what we do and we do it as best we can. I never would have thought that we could have withstood it for this long, but you have hung in here with us. And for that, we are so grateful. And so I'm now going to turn it over to Dina as she welcomes us in song. Good morning. This is a house built on love, and I'm going to invite you to join me in prayer. So as we move into our heart space and we open up and let the love that we are flow out, let that love go all over our country, all over our world. There are so many people today who are still reeling from this pandemic that we've been in for the last year.
Many have lost loved ones, more than one. Some family members have lost more than one family member. We hold them near and dear in our hearts. And for each one of you that is here this morning, whatever is on your heart this morning, know that love is the healing bomb. And we let that love just go in and do the work that it is needed to bring you into more peace more and more comfort. And so as we open up for our time together today, we are so grateful for technology. We are so grateful for how it stretches us how it shows us that we can do more than we ever thought we could. And we just give thanks for each and every one of you that are giving your time here this morning and hoping and knowing that you will be richly blessed as a result of that. And so for that and so much more, we give thanks for this awesome service that we are about to embark on. And for that and all the love that we can send out we say thank you, God, and so it is, and we let it be. Amen. Amen. And I am seeing some other folks on here. I see Cheryl Harrison with us. Good morning, Cheryl. Cheryl is our webmaster, and um, I think she's probably coming to us from Indiana. She's been there um, helping um, with her uh, passing of her um and I'm not sure if it was her mom or her dad. I can't remember at the moment. Anyway, I'm very happy that you're with us. I see Sally here from Syracuse. Yelena, hello. Patty Lacombe, Jana, Zoe from Massachusetts. Oh, so many of you are here with us this morning. And for that, I am so grateful. And I am so grateful because we have with us this morning, Vashali uh, Mamgain. And she is coming to us from India this morning. So, um, so much happening, so much good stuff uh, going on. And so let us now begin our service with our invocation. And we know, as we say this invocation, the truth behind this. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. One presence, one power operating in our lives, and that is God. And our vision statement, our vision statement is centered in divine love. We celebrate a spiritually transformed world. And as we stay in that energy of love and we come and meet every experience today in that, from that energy of love, we will see a spiritually transformed world. And our mission statement is Unity Center for Spiritual Growth reaches in to reach out through education, service, and creation of community. Everything begins with prayer. And then we take that prayer and we place it in whatever way we're being called. And we have core values that we live by and they are, we are loving, we are accepting, we are authentic. We are transformative. We are soul-centric. We are compassionate. And we are welcoming. And that is the truth about us. And so I'm going to turn it back over to Dina as she shares with us our community song today. Group song today is We Are the Vision Makers. Oops, I don't think we do it in a different key. Yes, we do. <clears throat> we are the vision makers of the world with all of our hearts joined as one god is love we are love together Peacemakers of the world With all of our hearts 
hearts joined as one. God is love, we are love. Together we all make a difference. We are the peacemakers of the world. With all of our hearts joined as one. God is love, we are love. And that is truly the truth. Together, we all make a difference. And together, we work unity principles in our life. And this is where I share with you every Sunday, how are we using our principles to move us through our day with clarity, focus, grace, and ease. And the first principle is that God is good and everywhere present. There is no place on this earth where you can be that God is not because God is breathing you. God is, is within you. So you can't ever be away from God. The second one is that the spirit of God lives within each person. Therefore, all people are inherently good. I want to say that again, because this is one that we sometimes forget, especially when we're having uh, problems with somebody, that all people are inherently good. Because if that spirit of God lives within me, then that spirit of God lives within them as well. And the third one is, we create our life experiences through our way of thinking. Our thoughts, when they are held and impressed with feeling, they show up in our out of life. Our thoughts are creative. Everything that we think and hold and impress with our feelings will come into your world. So be mindful of the thoughts that you're holding. And remember what you're thinking today is going to show up tomorrow. So I want to just share a little bit of this one this morning because something came up this morning and I realized where I was in error. Um, we had a little bit of, uh, well, this morning I knew that we were going to be um, uploading um, Vashali's talk because her internet connection in uh, India is unstable. And although she is with us this morning, um, she sent the talk in a format so that we could hear it without it being disrupted. And this morning, I was a mess wondering if we could get it loaded or not. And so I told Leroy, I said, I got to tell you what I'm thinking. And then all of a sudden, I said, oh, my God, I don't want to think those thoughts. And so I immediately went to um, trusting and having faith that everything was going to work out. And sure enough, it did. So this is where all the time we have the opportunity to look at what are we thinking? And is that what we want to have show up? So in my humanness and in all our humanness, we're going to do it. But the sooner we catch it, the easier it's going to be for us to transform it. And so the fourth one is, there is power in affirmative prayer which we believe increases our connection to God. And immediately I went into prayer. I went into prayer and gave thanks for the fact that everything was going to work out. I, uh, all is well. All is well. All will be very well. And sure enough, it has been. So prayer and meditation is imperative to making sure that we get what we want going forward. And then, of course, the last one which I've just demonstrated is knowledge of these spiritual principles is not enough. We must live them. And I had to live into them this morning. So these are in your spiritual toolbox. And please make sure you take them out when you're finding yourself in anxiety or worry or fear. Pull out the tool from your toolbox that will help you to move through that. And so... That is my life lesson this morning. 
And now is the time that we um, introduce to you our daily word reader. And today our daily word we reader is someone who you know very well and somebody who practices these principles on a daily basis, moment by moment. And he is such an inspiration for all of us. And that is Jack Cole. Good morning, Jack. Good morning, Pat. It is so good to see you, my friend, this morning. Good to see you, too. <laughs> and thank you for sharing the daily word with us. And Jack is not only a prayer partner, but he is also a board member. So we are very blessed to have him with us this morning. So I'm going to turn it over to you, my dear. Okay. Today is March 14th, 2021. And the word for today is energy. The energy of divine life renews me. How do I have the focus to achieve my goals? How do I have the strength to carry on through challenging times? How do I have the aptitude to learn, grow, and change when I'm called upon to do new things? At the heart of everything I am called to do is the energy to do it. I am a divine being. And I call upon the power of God within me to channel my energy in deliberate ways. Divine energy is inexhaustible, unlike my muscles, which can tire, and my mind, which can become frazzled. The power of God within flows through me unimpeded. In prayer, I claim divine energy, and imagine it flowing through me with the force of a mighty waterfall. I am grateful for my renewal. In the verse today, even youth will faint and be weary. The young will be, fall exhausted, but those who wait for the Lord shall be renewed, shall renew their strength. And that's Isaiah 40, 30, and 31. Thank you. The word is energy. Thank you, Jack. And speaking of prayer and energy, our prayer partners this morning are uh, Jana and Jacqueline, and they are holding the space for us today, and they will be available to pray with you at the conclusion of the service. You will find a, a link in the chat box um, later in the service that connects you to them. And so now we'll go back to Miss Dina. To open up Vashali's talk, this is an arrangement of hands. If I could tell the world just one thing, it would be that we're all okay. And not to worry, cause war is wasteful and useless in times like these. I won't be made useless. I won't be idle with despair. I will gather myself around my faith. For light does the darkness most fear. My hands are small, I know, but they're not yours, they are my own. They're not yours, they are my own. And I am never broken, we are God's eyes, God's hands, God's heart. stole your golden shoes it didn't steal your laughter heartache came to visit me but I knew it wasn't ever after we'll fight not out of spite for someone must stand up for what's right cause where there's a man who has no shall go singing we are God's eyes God's hands 
Wow, that was absolutely beautiful, Dina. Thank you. And um, now I would like to introduce, before we hear her, I would love to introduce to you our speaker this morning. She is no stranger to us. She's spoken with us before. And as I mentioned to you, uh, she is over in India and has been there quite a while now um, as she is uh, there with her mom who is um, needing some extra help and extra care right now. And Vash Ali is an associate professor of economics at U uh, University of Southern Maine. And she is the director of the Bertha Crosley Ball Center for Compassion. And she comes to us this morning as part of our season for nonviolence. Um, and I just love this woman. This woman has a light that just shines so brightly. And if you have not experienced her before, um, you will see what I'm talking about. Um, she will be joining us after the service at coffee hour. So as she's speaking this morning, if a question bubbles up in you, write it down so that when we go to coffee hour, you can ask her. And I am so delighted to introduce to you my friend, Vashali Mamgain. So greetings and thank you, Reverend Pat, for that lovely introduction. I want to begin by sharing a little bit of a, uh, one of my favorite shows, The Big Bang Theory. So one of the characters in the show is this brilliant scientist called Sheldon. And he's brilliant, but he's quite odd. And um, he's very particular. He has, doesn't know how to pick up social cues. He has um, obsessive compulsive disorder. He's, uh, so he gets engaged and he calls up his mother to tell her uh, that he's engaged. His mother is a devout Christian and uh, Sheldon is an overt atheist. So this uh, story I'm relating picks up with Sheldon calling his mother and saying, mother, I am engaged to be married. And his mother says, oh, Shelly, I've been praying to Jesus for this because she knows he's a really odd bird and she didn't think you know, his lack of social cues would get him a partner in his life. So she says, oh, Shelly, I've been praying to Jesus for this. And he says, the Lord had nothing to do with it and my marriage will not be in a church. And she said, that's all right, Sheldon. I'm going to be at your wedding. And Jesus is in my heart. And wherever Jesus is, is a church. So Sheldon is clearly stumped. He says, all right then. You can't bring anyone else. He's your plus one. So my friends, here we are together gathered in presence of spirit are plus ones, whatever we want to call it. Jesus, the Buddha, Guru Padmasambhava, divine presence, love, basic goodness. We are in presence. And we are in presence with each other. As a way of acknowledging that, let's breathe together. So wherever you are, first, let's just shake out a little bit. Ah, let's do a little neck roll, very nice. Gently and with no, if you don't have any pain, please. Just rolling our neck from one side to another. And then reversing direction, beautiful. 
just being curious about this embodied form of ours. As it moves through space, this beautiful body that allows us to be here in space, in this world, with each other. And I'd like to invite us to just do gentle in-breath. And as we breathe out, exhale, allow those shoulders to drop. Feeling that exhalation in our feet. Allowing our hands to be heavy in our lap or our knees, wherever we are. And then I'm going to invite you to rock a little, just rock in space, from side to side, just allowing your body to move in space, gently, feeling it go one way, releasing, allowing it to come back, side to side. And as we do this, we can feel all, all the tightness in our body sort of unwinding, this rocking back and forth gently. In many spiritual traditions in the world, we rock in prayer. We rock in prayer because it's a way of soothing ourselves, of sort of recognizing that we are in space. We are not these rigid beings. We move, we move. And it's also a way of recognizing when we move that there, is, there are others around us. So one of the things that I would like to invite us in our life is as we go forward to become aware. And if, by the way, feel free to stop rocking if it doesn't work for you. And if it works for you, rock on. Um, but one of the reasons I love this rocking practice is because it's something that, first of all, there are deep, old memories. I remember my grandfather rocking me as a baby in his lap, rocking my cousins. And there's love that goes with that. And the other reason I'm inviting us to think of our embodiedness is because the work we are being called to do in the world the work that is so central to Unity's mission, to reach in, to reach out, calls for a sense of knowing who else is in space with us. We're talking today and enacting spiritual activism. The past year, COVID has slayed us. And it has also stopped us enough, long enough, to see all the cracks and fissures in our society, particularly those having to do with racial injustice. And one of the key learnings in the work of standing with oppressed peoples is to know our place in that space. So embodied practices are beautiful for that. They're really informative. It's like when we dance together, each one of us knows where the other is. 
when we play together, we know where the other person is. We know to pass the ball. We're not doing this alone. So one of the people I want to invoke in this is um, one of Jack Seary's heroes, Father Daniel Berrigan. Some of you may know him and for others who don't, he is a Catholic priest uh, who um, it was an anti-Vietnam War activist. And he and eight others who came to be known as the Catonsville Nine went to a draft office and uh, burned draft files of young men who were going to be shipped off to Vietnam to fight the war. They burned their files. And in their manifesto, they wrote, better the files than the bodies of children. The reason Father Barrett stand up to me is because he embodies fierce compassion. Sometimes we think of compassion as something for someone else. But really what Father Barrigan was doing was questioning everything. He was questioning his He was questioning what does it mean to be American? What does it mean to be Christian? So he was showing fierce compassion for his fellow American, his fellow Christians. To say, let us explore this together. Let us lean into this question. One of my teachers, Roshi Joan Halifax, talks about the Zen peacemaker precepts. There are three of them. The first is not knowing. By not knowing, we mean we understand that we are but one part of a vast interdependent, interconnected matrix. that we are connected to spirit, we are connected to each other in ways that our individual minds cannot fathom. So we rest in the not knowing. We understand impermanence, we understand interconnectedness. And this engenders in us a sense of humility, so important when we engage the world. The second precept is bearing witness. And what bearing witness requires is that we have in us the capacity to witness, to be with someone else, to be with someone else's pain, to be with their suffering, and also to be with their joy, with their celebration. Bearing witness begins with being able to bear witness to our entire experience. That's why Reverend Pat said, prayer, meditation, contemplation, being in nature, being in nature, just witnessing the glorious splendor of the beautiful place we live in. In many spiritual traditions, they talk about how difficult it is to be rich and be in connection with spirit. It's not that there's anything wrong with riches per se, but the idea is that being rich can actually insulate us from other people. It can separate us. And so I want to draw a parallel today between richness and whiteness. If we are born, if you are born as a white bodied person in the United States, automatically it insulates you from a lot of the depredations and injustices that black and brown bodied people face. 
you may have a child in a school system, a grandchild in a school system, and if they act out, they get the benefit of the doubt. A black and brown body child is three to five times more likely to be punished than a white child. Whiteness protects your child, your grandchild. And when you hear me say the statistic, you might think, oh, this happens in the South. But no, last year, Portland Public Schools released a report where black and brown children are three times more likely to be punished. And this is how life is. So one of the key things that keeps folks from bearing witness is this insulation that keeps people from knowing the pain of others, that keeps white people from knowing the experience of black and brown people. And this is where I want to do a big shout out to Reverend Pat and your group, because I know within Unity there is a group who's exploring these issues. Because without shedding these blinders, we are alienated from others. And that's my invitation to you, is to look at bearing witness as a shedding, a, a process of shedding all the things that bind us. Whiteness can seem like a privilege, but it's really a blinder. And particularly for spiritual people, we can't afford to be blinded. And the third peacemaker precept is compassionate action. The reason that compassionate action comes after not knowing and bearing witness is because the first two engender a humility. They engender a letting go of being able to be with pain. So when we act, we're not acting out of a need to feel less pain ourselves but to really see how can we help in this situation? How can we help humbly? How can we take cues from other people, from affected communities? So the three peacemaker precepts, beautiful, complete, and really um, the, the first one, I'll just repeat them, not knowing, engenders humility, bearing witness, sheds our own blinders, and alerts us to what alienates us from others, and compassionate action, which allows us to act. So in very small ways, and you know, we act in community, we don't act alone. Again, I, I, love, I love the community at Unity. And I know that this work can only happen in community. And we might feel, oh, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm doing so much already. How could I possibly take on anything more? And that's why we do things one step at a time. So I wanted to offer a few things that are small but can be done. One is um, Wabanaki Reach is a mixed race group where uh, white and um, other race people work with indigenous people in Maine to bring about a process of uh, reconciliation, of truth and reconciliation. And there are, there are many things one can join. I invite you to go to the REACH website. So if you just Google Wabanaki REACH, R-E-A-C-H, you'll find them. One of the things that they sponsored, the bills they sponsored, is LD 291, it passed the main legislature and it simply said um, indigenous people's history has to be taught in all main schools. This was a few years ago and it hasn't happened. So you have real power because you, your children go to these schools. If you were to talk to the principal or the administrators to say, why aren't our children learning the history? That has a huge impact. The same for um, school punishment rates. 
when you ask something like this, and I don't mean, I have deep respect for school teachers, for school administrators, so I don't think there is any one individual person who is purposely doing this, and yet the system is producing these results. So these are two very, um, small things, but they are very meaningful things that you can be involved in. And the other thing that is a quite big thing, but it is a direct uh, result of punishment in school, is the incarceration rates. In our country, three million people are incarcerated, of whom predominantly they're black and brown bodied people. We have to query that. I recommend a movie by Ava DuVernay called The 13th, which is based on the 13th Amendment. It's a documentary. It's a really good place to start. And it's a good place to practice the not knowing, the bearing witness, before we can take compassionate action. I'm going to um, really bring this around to why we do this why we are all in it together is because we are all in it together. Because when we study oppression, somebody else's oppression, we are actually working to free ourselves. Lila Watson is a famous um, Aboriginal activist and it's this quote is attributed to her, but she says that a group of them came up with it. And the quote is, and give me a second please, um, she says, so Lilla Watson says, if you have come to help us, you are wasting your time. But if you have come because your liberation is bound up with ours, then let us work together. And Adrian Marie Brown says, things are not getting worse, they are getting uncovered. We must hold each other tight and continue to pull back the veil. Things are not getting worse, they are getting uncovered. We must hold each other tight and continue to pull back the veil. We must hold each other tight, love each other, continue to pull back the veil. So thank you so much. I feel so grateful to be in presence with you, with your community, to be doing this work together. Thank you. Um. Chris, bring Va Vashali back on with me, please. Vashali, that was absolutely beautiful. And and the technology gods were with us. <laughs> <laughs> and I am very grateful for that. Uh, but your message, your message is so on point. And um, one of the things that as as a spiritual leader and as as someone leading this community i am i am looking for more ways that we can make a difference in the outer community getting beyond our walls and um you've given us some some uh places to look and and i'm very grateful for that so my dear we will um see you at coffee hour and uh, we can continue the conversation there. And yeah, you, may have, you, you may have some other ideas for us as well. Yeah, and Chris, if you want to play the video, if people want to move and joy, that's a possibility, go for it. And if not, we'll be in coffee hour, whatever works for you all. We, we will play the video. And because you um, set us up in the beginning with meditation, we're going to forego the meditation at the end and do the video, and then we'll go right on to Dina. Okay. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Oh. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Don't you know that? This joy that
that I have. The world didn't give it to me. Oh, I said the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Oh, this strength that I have, this strength that I have. This strength that I have. Oh, yeah, now. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it to me. This strength that I have. Oh, yeah. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it to me. The strength that I have. Oh, yeah. The world didn't give it to me. Oh, I said the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Oh, this love, this love that I have. This love that I have. Oh, yeah. Know that this love that I have, yeah, the world didn't give it to me. Singing, the world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. Oh, this pride that I have, this pride that I have, this pride that I have. Oh yeah, now. the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it to me. This pride that I have, I said the, the world didn't give it to me. Don't you know that. This pride that I have, yeah, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, I said the world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. All this peace that I have, that I have. Oh, yeah. the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give me my this peace. peace that I have. Oh, yeah, now. The world didn't give it to me. Won't you sing about peace? This peace that I have. Oh, yeah, now. The world didn't give it to me. Mm-hmm. I said the, the world, world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. All oh, this joy that I have, this joy that I have. This joy that I have. Oh, yeah, now. The world yeah. didn't give it to yeah, me. The world didn't give it to me. This joy no, that I no. Have. I said the, the world, world didn't give it to me. Don't you know? That this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, I said the world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. The world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. The world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Resistance Revival Chorus believes in the words written by the poet Toy Derricotte when she wrote, Joy is an act of resistance. We believe in the words of Mr. Harry Belafonte, who said, When the movement is strong, the music is strong. We sing to revive the hearts of those who fight for social justice, and we sing together for freedom. Awesome. That was awesome. Thank you. Now we'll turn it over to Dina. All right, folks. I'm going to guess that you were singing along by the end of that, so we can just continue here into Be the Change. you 
Yes. Be the change and the light you want to see in the world. Absolutely. And now I'm going to bring back our friend Jack as he shares with us our offering statement. Thank you, Pat. Unity has a very special message, and we've had we shared part of that today. This is a message that you don't find everywhere. It's a message that is meant to go forward at this time, even though we can't be together one together in one place. The message is going out further and further out into the world. That's what we this uh, offering is about. So. If you can't hold it in your hand, hold in your heart what you're willing to give and say with me, divine light and love in and as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, and all that I give. Thank you, God, for the joy of giving. Amen. Mm, thank you, Jack. Thank you, thank you. And I want to share with you a few things that are happening here. Uh, let me see. Let me get the right paper up here so I can give you the give you the scoop. Today, um, Vashali, as I said, will be joining us for a uh, coffee hour. So come and let's talk together and um, look at ways that we can... Um, take her message and move it out into the world. Of course, the miracles happens today at noontime. And um, next Sunday, uh, we will be having a good friend of mine uh, and someone who we have used her songs in the past. Uh, Bukeka Blakemore will be joining us. Bukeka is um, a, a singer and um, artist and you will just absolutely love her. She'll be doing special music with us next Sunday. On the 28th, we will be having a community meeting. Um, and this will be a time for us to uh, talk about all the things that are happening and what we see going forward. Hope you can be there. We'll go right after our, the service ends. So there'll be no coffee hour on that day. I am doing a Holy Thursday service, which is on April 1st at 7 o'clock. Um, registration is required for that, so you can find the link in uh, Hot Thought. I'm also doing a new class, and um, I'm very excited about it. It's on a little tiny book, and it's called How to Use Spiritual Power Tools to Support Your Soul. And the author has been generous and has given me books so that if you sign up for this class, I will make sure that a book gets to you before we start. And the first class will begin on April 14th. That's a change. Um, I moved it a week further out and it will be for, on four Wednesdays from 6.30 to 8. And there is still time to sign up for the silent retreat uh, that Jack Siri will be um facilitating at Marie Joseph's Retreat Center. And that is on uh, from April, um, April 11th through the 14th. It's a Sunday through Tuesday or a Sunday through Wednesday, depending on how long you want to stay. And so those are some of the things that are happening here. I do want to remind you that um, everything is in Heart Thoughts. Everything is on our web page. And um, we are just very happy um, to be able to continue to do the things that we are doing um, and been able to keep this community together. Uh, you guys have been awesome and have hung in here with us. And for that, we are so grateful. And so now I'm going to invite Dina to uh, end us with uh, the peace song.
Beautiful. And I can see by the comments in the chat box that um, you really appreciated Vashali and her message this morning. So very grateful. And I want to leave you with a practice this week. We've been doing the uh, season for nonviolence and every week I give you a practice. And this week is dreaming in mission. Martin Luther King Jr. had a great dream. What is your dream for peace? Write it down. What is one thing you can do to honor your dreams? Do it each week, each day this week. My life is my message, says Gandhi. Write down what you want to stand for in your life. Note at least one way you can show through action that you stand for your beliefs. Take action each day this week. Well, if that doesn't just align right up with Vashali's message this morning, I love how the universe supports. And so um, let us end now with a prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. We are the light. The love of God enfolds us. We are the love. The power of God protects us. We are the power. The presence of God watches over us. We are the presence. Wherever we are, God is and all is swell. Have a blessed day, my friends. Hope to see you at coffee hour and um, enjoy your day.